Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Now, you've probably heard a lot about ventilators in the news recently. And the big concern right now is a shortage of ventilators which are critical for addressing pneumonia. Pune ke engineers ne ek aisi khoj ki hai jo logo ki jaan bachane mein bahut badi bhumika nibha sakte hain. A prototype ventilator so simple that thousands of them can be made to orient our efforts uh, around the world to get more ventilators. ventilator that can Are there enough ventilators in this country? But what is a ventilator? How does it work? And why are so many companies and universities rushing to manufacture them right now? So many questions and we just had to find out the answers. So my colleagues and I at the University of Waterloo researched a lot about ventilators and in fact we came up with a design of our own as well. But before we get into that, let's first find out about ventilators. So as the number of cases of COVID-19 around the world are increasing, more and more people have to be put on ventilators. The problem with this is that hospitals just weren't ready for these influx of patients and there are not enough mechanical ventilators to go around. So that led to situations where doctors had to play God, which means they had to choose who gets the ventilator and who doesn't based on their chance of survival or other factors. I mean, that's just a horrible position to be put in, right? I can't imagine what I would do if I were in that situation. So, you might say the solution is simple. Just ask companies that make ventilators to produce more. But unfortunately, the solution is a bit more complicated. So, you see, a competitive ventilator costs anywhere between five to $40,000. That's an insane amount of money for a single ventilator. And while developed countries don't have any problem in shelling out these huge amounts uh, of money for a single ventilator, it, it's a bit more of a problem in developing countries. That's why you see a lot of universities and companies coming up with these low-cost designs. While their heart is in the right place, um, hopefully by the end of the video you'll see why these are not temp these are not permanent solutions and can offer only temporary relief to patients suffering from COVID-19. A ventilator is basically just an artificial lung that helps in the breathing process. It's used in, ca in cases where patients find difficulty in breathing, like in cases where they might have suffered a stroke, maybe they've overdosed on drugs, suffer from pneumonia or some other respiratory disease. Now, the coronavirus is known to cause a condition called as the Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome or ARDS as you might have heard of it. And these patients are generally critically ill and they have a very hard time breathing on their own. And that's why they need to be put on ventilators. Now I'm going to break down the design process of ventilators into two parts. First, I'm going to talk about some basic human physiology and what variables these ventilators need to be able to control. And then I'm going to talk about how these ventilators uh, use different modes to achieve control over these different variables. The human lung functions in two main cycles the inhalation cycle and the exhalation cycle. Now, in the inhalation cycle, the diaphragm, which is a muscle at the bottom of your ribcage, contracts, which causes the lungs to expand, which in turn causes a negative pressure to be formed inside the lungs. Now, this negative pressure is what causes a certain volume of air to be sucked inside your lungs. If you were to look at a pressure volume diagram inside the lung, you'll see that it looks like a typical hysteresis curve. So as the diaphragm contracts and the lungs are expanding, the negative pressure causes the volume of air to keep increasing up to a certain point. Now in the exhalation cycle, as the diaphragm relaxes, there's a positive pressure that builds up inside the lungs. And this positive pressure displaces the, lung, the air that's inside the lungs out back into the atmosphere. When I say positive and negative pressure, I'm talking about uh, pressures that are relative to the atmospheric pressure. The maximum volume of air that a person can inhale depends on factors like their age and their height and is called as tidal volume. So the idea behind a ventilator is to help patients perform these basic functions of inhalation and exhalation. I've already mentioned a couple of important parameters or variables that are very critical to this process. That is the pressure and the volume. Another super important parameter is the breathing rate, which is basically the number of breaths taken per minute. 
Now here when I say breath, I mean I'm including both inhalation and exhalation, counted as one breath. So now a patient, depending on their condition, might have to breathe super fast or their breathing might be more normal. Doctors usually provide patients with a mixture of air and oxygen, which means oxygen is another variable that has to be regulated. Other variables include the temperature of the air, the humidity, and making sure that the air is filtered so that you prevent the spread of germs. Now you see that the list of variables that a ventilator has to control is already getting super long. And I haven't even talked about all the variables, just the super important ones. So you're probably starting to see now why the design of ventilators can get expensive and complicated. Not to mention that you're dealing with the lives of people here. So the, uh, the control over these devices has to be extremely precise. Now that we have a list of variables that a ventilator has to control, let's look at the different modes that they operate in to help control these variables. Now there are three main modes of operation and these include the volume modes, the pressure modes and the dual modes. In the volume mode, a set tidal volume is delivered to a patient at each inhalation phase. Now forcing a certain volume of air into a lung might not be the most optimal solution in all cases. For example, in patients who are suffering from ARDS, the alveoli, which are the smallest structure in the respiratory system, may get filled with fluid and have a chance of collapsing at the end of each respiration cycle. This basically means that to force a certain volume of air, you have to increase the pressure more than what you normally require. And increasing the pressure up to a higher value is not always a good idea. Sometimes this leads to a condition known as parotrauma, which is basically injury afflicted due to pressure. Unfortunately, most of the designs that are being shared are based on a concept called as the bag valve mask or BVMs. Now, uh, these bag valve masks operate in volume control modes, which means that they try to um, input a certain volume of air at each respiration cycle. Now, don't get me wrong, these kind of designs are very useful. If, I mean, first responders use them um, in emergency situations or even when people are transferring patients from the operation theater to the ICU, um, people use bag valve masks. But these are not a permanent solution and can only offer temporary relief. Using them for an extended period of time, uh, for example, patients who are suffering from COVID-19 who are in the hospital and require a ventilator for weeks on end, might lead to the chance of them developing parotrauma. So one way to prevent the collapse of alveoli at the end of each respiration cycle is to shift the entire pressure volume curve that we showed you earlier to the right, which means that you maintain positive pressure in the lungs even after an exhalation cycle. Now this is what is referred to as positive end expiratory pressure or PEEP. For any ventilator to be viable to be used as a permanent solution has to incorporate PEEP. The second mode of operation is called the pressure mode, where the respiration is now driven by a pressure cycle. Now this reduces the risk of parotrauma, but unfortunately the pressure modes offer little to no control over the volume of air that's inhaled by a patient. Basically this happens because everyone's lungs mechanics are a bit different. A person with a very stiff lung might intake less volume for a certain amount of pressure than a person whose lungs are more compliant. So you see that there are advantages and disadvantages to using both the volume and the pressure control mode. Ideally, a very functional ventilator should be able to operate in the dual control mode, which has control over the pressure and the volume that is delivered to the patient. Whew, that was a lot. So just to have a quick recap, a ventilator is basically an artificial lung that helps in the breathing process. Now each patient needs a certain volume of air to be delivered at a certain pressure and in some cases, even a peep pressure might have to be maintained. Now, other variables that have to be controlled include the breathing rate, the oxygen levels, the temperature of the air, the humidity of the air, and making sure that the air is filtered uh, to prevent the spread of germs. Again, all the designs that are being shared on social media that are based on the bag valve mask are no doubt useful designs temporarily, and they're done with good intentions. But they cannot be used for patients that have to be put on ventilators for weeks on end. Keeping all the research that we had done in mind, my colleagues and I um, went about trying to design a ventilator that was highly functional 
basically meaning that we could operate in all the kind of modes that we needed while also being manufactured at a fraction of the cost that these uh, commercial ventilators are by trying to use 3D printed components or using components that can be bought off the shelf. So now my colleague Yash Shah will go through the design process with you. Uh, for the viewers, this is my colleague and my senior Yash Shah. Uh, Yash and I were actually, uh, uh, we both finished our masters from the University of Delft and now we're doing our PhD at the University of Waterloo. Maybe yes, you could uh, quickly give us a bit of background uh, um, on, on the process. Sure, yeah. So, yes, like you mentioned, it was uh, when, it, when this pandemic began, there were a lot of calls from different governments and international and local bodies to uh, indeed build something that can be useful for the coronavirus patients such as ventilators or personal protection equipment and many other things. So we thought that let's, uh, as fluid dynamics engineers, uh, ventilator is something that we can definitely test, build and try it out. Um, <clears throat> because we usually deal with pressure sensors and different types of valves in our like day-to-day -day applications in our lab. So that was something that was motivating for uh, our team. Um, and indeed, uh, the other aspect was to keep the design low cost. So as, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we got together and thought about it, uh, to, to keep a low cost design and, uh, try to fulfill all the requirements for the coronavirus patients that, uh, that are needed. So I'll get into the design now. We have been working on a low-cost design of a ventilator ourselves, which can incorporate the essential ventilator modes required for critical COVID-19 patients. The basic design consists of two inlet ports, one for air and one for oxygen supplied by the hospital. These gases enter the mixing chamber, which has a variety of sensors to measure the oxygen content, pressure, and temperature. The inlet and outlet flow from this chamber is controlled by means of electronically triggering the fast-acting solenoid valves present at either sides of the chamber. The pressure sensors adjoining these valves enable us to use the PID algorithm to quickly and accurately actuate the valve. A flow rate sensor can be incorporated at the outlet of the chamber, but given our low budget goal, we take another approach. Since the flow is practically stagnant at the mixing chamber, we can use the Bernoulli's equation at point PI to determine the flow rate and tidal volume. This is a simplistic principle, but in practice requires the calculation of pressure drops along the ducts and the valves and correcting the predictions. COVID-19 patients require a high peak inspiration pressure or PIP since the lungs become less compliant. Thus, the major goal of this design is to provide high PIP with low to moderate tidal volumes, which is a standard procedure. In addition, PEEP is essential to be maintained to prevent the collapse of the oxygen exchanging alveoli. This is maintained by controlling another solenoid valve and pressure port subassembly at the exhaling branch. The humidity is maintained at ambient levels using the humidity exchanger at the junction of the inhaling and exhaling branch. Other parameters such as the respiratory rate and ice to E ratio are controlled by timing the inhaling and exhaling valves as determined by the inputs. All the signals are sensed and actuated by using a low-cost microcontroller such as a Raspberry Pi. A crucial aspect of mechanical ventilation is to sense the breath that is initiated by the patient known as patient triggering. Whenever the patient inhales outside the time breath cycles, a low pressure signal is sensed at the pressure port PP, triggering the valve SI to open and provide the breath. Depending on the chosen mode of operation, whether assist control or SIMV, the full tidal volume or partial volume is provided in this patient trigger breath. These patient triggers become more and more important as the patients start to recover and need to be trained again to breathe on their own, a process known as ventilator weaning. This design incorporates all these essential features that are required for a complete ventilation treatment of a COVID-19 patient.
Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. A huge shout out to the Fluid Guys group at the University of Waterloo, which comprises of Yasha, Teddy Zhang, and Nikhilesh. If you want to get in touch with them, the details are in the description below. And if you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section. And as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Bye.